Hello, parents and students. This is Dr. Grant. I hope that you're being very safe during this most recent winter storm. As you are aware, Greenville County Schools is transitioning to an e-learning day on tomorrow, Tuesday, January the 18th, which is also the first day of the second semester. Please watch the rest of this video that will outline the expectations for what we will do in an e-learning situation. Parents and students, please make sure that you're checking your email for introductory emails from teachers, which include Google Meet links. Also parents, please be mindful that second semester schedules are already housed and stored in the parent and student backpack. Please make sure you take some time to view that and please enjoy the rest of our video. Hello students and parents, this is Dr. Grant. I wanna to come to you today with this very brief video that will give us some guidelines and some vision about what happens in the event that at Wade Hampton High School, we have to move to an e-learning or a virtual learning environment. We know that in this current climate, there are two reasons why we would ever have to shift our school day to virtual learning. The first is that relates to inclement weather. In the event that we're not able to physically come into the building, we'll switch to a virtual learning environment for that day or for that week. Secondly, we know that related to the COVID spread or the spread of the COVID virus here in the Greenville community, we have a significant number of adults at any one time that may be absent from the building because they may have to isolate or quarantine or frankly be at home and ill and cannot be in the physically in the building with our students. In that environment, we could very well shift to a virtual or learning environment for a set period of time. Both of those situations only involve during the school day. So for example, athletics could very well not be affected by this. Really depends on the situation. In any case, I want to come to bring you some guidance about well, what will happen for us if we have to shift to that type of environment. So let's get after it, shall we? Let's first have a conversation about attendance and Google Meets. Uh, Google Meet is the platform by which our students will engage with teachers to receive their classes every single day in their instruction. Well, in order for that to be very effective, we know that we need to be present at those Google Meets. And so for us, as opposed to last school year, attendance is going to be a real thing this year. And we're going to continuously monitor and collect data on attendance every single day. So for students, it's important that you are on time and that you attend all of your classes via your Google Meets. Students typically have four periods in a day. Some may have three. There are some who have only two classes uh, each day. But well, no matter how many courses you have this semester, if we are in a virtual environment, it is our expectation that you attend class and that you're there on time. The teacher will monitor and collect that just like we do in an in-person physical environment. Students be mindful that there is no bell in a virtual environment. So the teacher will be the one who will dismiss you from your Google Meet in time for you to get to your next class. And keep in mind, once again, that we will take attendance each and every day in every block. While in your Google Meets, keep in mind that the teacher is going to work very hard to design instruction that will involve your participation as the student. Your part of the bargain students is for you to be active participants in that class. And then the last piece of this is that it's our expectation that while you're in the Google Meet, that you also have your cameras turned on. It's very, very important that your cameras are on so that we can actively be involved and engage in the class. That will be an expectation that we set from day one. The other pieces we want to talk about are behavior expectations and academic dishonesty. Obviously, students, we know and understand that just like when the building, we have certain expectations for behavior on a regular basis. The same thing exists in a virtual environment. So teachers have the authority and the ability to remove students from a Google Meet if the behavior is not where it needs to be. The same thing that would happen if you were here in person here at the school in a physical environment. On the first instance of that, the teacher will give you a warning uh, because we believe in students being able to rebound from poor decisions. 
just like I hope that somebody would give me grace and give me a warning if I did something that was inappropriate. On the second offense, the teacher will remove that student from the Google Meet and the teacher will make contact with the parent to make them aware so that they can make uh, they can be aware of and have that conversation at home about the behavior. On the third event, the teacher will remove them from the class and the teacher and also make contact with the parent and they'll also submit that discipline referral for administration to be involved at that next level. I also hope and believe and I really, really hope in my heart that students truly value the honor and the, the privilege of being academically honest. We do a very good job on a regular basis trying to make sure that learning is meaningful. But we also recognize and acknowledge that in a virtual environment, it produces an opportunity for dishonesty to creep in, a temptation of sorts to cheat. And so we wanna acknowledge it on the front end so that we can be clear about what, how we are gonna respond if that happens. On the first offense of academic dishonesty or cheating, uh, we will make the parent aware of that incident and the student will receive a zero on that assignment. On the second offense, uh, hopefully it, we don't get to number two, but if we do, the teacher will give a zero for that assignment, make a, a contact to the parent, and they're gonna submit a discipline referral to administration for me and my team, admin team, to respond to that particular student. The referral will go to the grade level administrator. Let's talk about teacher websites. Uh, parents and students, on every teacher's website, the teacher will have posted their class schedule so you'll know exactly when they have class. You'll see their office hours, which indicates when they're available for uh, any kind of questions you might have about class, when they're on their planning period. And so they're able to have that kind of dialogue if you need to outside of class structure. Uh, sorry about the bells. Uh, they also will post their syllabi for their class and they'll update their Google Calendar to include assessment dates, which are the tests they're gonna give or quizzes, and then any project due dates that may exist there. So this is a great way for you, the student, or you, the parent, to really get a, a bird's eye view of exactly what's going on at any given time in any given class, right to the teacher's website. Thank you very much for having this conversation with me, or at very least listening to my video for today. We know that in these trying times, the only thing that's constant is change. For us, what we're going to do is be prepared for those changes if and when they come. Uh, we'll do our very best to uh, inform you and give you as much information as we learn it as well in either one of those two situations. One, in inclement weather, or if we get to a situation where we do not have the appropriate number of adults within our building to adequately supervise our most precious gift, with our, which is our students and our children. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, please feel free to give me a call or email me at any given time.